All right, class. Last topic for now, for this weekend. Uh, we are on page six now, and we are going to factor these trinomials that have a uh, lead coefficient, which is a little bit different than uh, what we saw on this last page up here. These didn't have any. So it just adds one more step to it, but it's very common to forget. Um, I'm going to be doing number five just to make the example easier. Some of these have very large numbers um, on them, uh, but they should still work. So we're going to be uh, starting this. Since we have a lead coefficient, we have this 9 here, we have to remember that we're going to be doing slide and divide. Okay? So slide and divide is going to be our technique for this. We only do this when there is a number in the front. So I'm going to take that, slide it. This 9 is going to multiply by the 11. So it's going to be x squared plus 30x minus 99. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to factor that 99, and it's a negative 99, okay? Uh, the factors are 1 and 99. Um, if you divide it by 2, it can't be divided by 2, so then you have to go 3, and uh, 99 divided by 3 is actually 33. And then we have 9 times 11. Uh, that's, we know that this is a factor. Think about, And then we try to think about the others between 9. So 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work. Uh, we can try 6, 99 divided by 6, doesn't work, uh, 99 divided by 7, and then 99 divided by 8. None of that works uh, until we get to 9. So it's 9 and 11 is going to work. Okay, But which ones are going to add to give me this middle value, this positive 30? Well, um, it looks like it's going to be 3 and 33 because the difference between them is 30, and we know that we're dealing with a negative 99 here, so one of these has to be negative, and it's actually going to be this 3. So this is these are going to be our factors, okay, or the start of them at least. So this is x minus 3 and x plus 33. All right. So this is the step that's often missed is that once you slide, some people forget and just stop here, but now we have to divide. So I'm going to be dividing that 9 back out. So the 9 is going to go here and here. And you'll notice for both of these that the 9 does not divide evenly. Okay. Um, and normally what that means is we just bump it to the front. But in this case, we can still simplify this fraction, and you need to do that whenever you can. So 3 over 9 actually reduces to um, 1 over 3. When we simplify, divide GCF is 3 for top and bottom. So divide 3 from top and bottom, you get 1 over 3. So I'm going to close that. Over here, I'm going to get 33 divided by 9. GCF again is 3. So this gets me uh, 33 divided by 3 is 11. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we're left with this. And now, since I can't simplify any further and this doesn't divide evenly, now I do the bottoms up. Okay. It means I take the bottoms of these and I move them to the front. Right there. So what that gets me is my final answer, which is 3x minus 1 times 3x plus 11. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so an easy example to start with to practice this would be question number one. Question number two would be a little more challenging just because it's higher numbers. And then question four, uh, I'm not going to make it to where you have to do three and six. Those numbers are just very large. And over here, if you want to pause the video, I wrote out all the factors of 49 times 18, which is 882. And so I did that for you, and you can look at that. Best technique for these large numbers is to think of the factors of the numbers that you multiplied. So 49 has 7 as a factor. And then 18 has 2, 3, and 6. And you'll notice that all of my factors here happen to be either multiples of those factors I just listed or exactly those factors. 2, 3, 6, 7 are all a part of this set because they are factors of these. So that's helpful when trying to determine these. Uh, but you can pause and, and copy this down on number 4, but you're I'm definitely going to need to finish this problem. Okay? Uh, so I'll leave you with that. 
and uh, good luck.